should probably be continued. Continuity of government is a program dating back to the Cold War which aims to ensure that the government will continue to function in the event of an attack on the United States. During the 80s, it prepared for a possible nuclear attack by the Soviet Union, but during the 90s, it focused instead on the possibility of a terrorist attack in the U.S. Considering that the SARS... SRAS, rather, supports COG by providing survivable communications linkages to federal and defense end users. It's worth noting that sophisticated communications methods have played an important role in the continuity of government program. In the 1980s, for example, much of its budget and hundreds of millions of dollars was spent on advanced communications equipment that would enable the teams involved in continuity of government to have secure conversations with U.S. military commanders, according to journalist and author James Mann. Furthermore, three of the program's key players during the 80s and 90s held critical positions in the U.S. government on 9-11. Those individuals, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, and Richard Clark, were the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, and White House Counterterrorism Advisor, respectively, when the attacks occurred. David Addington, Cheney's legal counsel in 2001, was also involved in the COG program. It's also notable that continuity of government was activated, apparently for the first time during the 9-11 attacks. Richard Clark had said that he gave the order to activate it apparently at around 9.45 a.m. on 9-11 or shortly after. He told ABC News, quote, on the morning of 9-11, the entire continuity of government program was activated. Every federal agency was ordered to activate an alternative command post, an alternative headquarters outside of Washington, D.C., and to staff it as soon as possible. Considering that the SRAS is intended to support the COG program, it was convenient to say the least that it was already operational on 9-11 and therefore immediately ready to be utilized by those involved with COG when the plan was activated. National Communication System and their critical response Government agencies experienced communications problems on 9-11 are the further sections in this article that again goes on and I would like to continue it but I believe I've already laid out quite a bit for you my friends for an angle of this story that we prior to this I was unaware backup communication system miraculously on and ready on 9-11 switched on exercise mode our other related 9-11 update is again we're just diving into the Jan 13 news purge good clean fun Deutsche's toxic tower is finally coming down. You can get more on that from ABC News. And isn't it always interesting to note that buildings closer to Towers 1 and 2 didn't fall, but buildings further away, such as building what? Fell down inexplicably. So, in addition to all the toxic things Deutsche Bank has already brought us, their toxic tower is finally coming down, my friend, as we are reaching the 10th anniversary of the catalyzing catastrophic event that is the blank check for everything we see now in the intervening years. Bush or Obama make no difference whatsoever. The international elite and their agenda rolls forward because, unfortunately, we keep falling for it. And that's why we're trying to use this alternative media to spread this kind of information out there while we can. Continuing down the news purge, we get to BioWars and EnviroHealth, where we find that there are, in addition to everything we covered last week on the mystery of the bird and fish mass die-offs, we have more reports of mass die-offs. Birds fall from sky in California. Thousands of dead fish found in Chicago. And you can learn more about that everywhere from InfoWars to Huffington Post. We do supply the flashback for you of what we covered last week, the mystery of dead birds and fish and other weird events and our interview with Siva Tuva. But more explanations have come, and perhaps we did mention this last week in covering our mass die-off coverage and all the related stories that make my head spin just thinking about it, and even reminds me now that I was talking about this to a co-worker who initially hadn't heard of it, but then once we got into it, oh yeah, I did hear about that. An old lady 
chimed in next to us and said, I heard about that. I don't believe that excuse about it being fireworks or any of that garbage. Those are the kind of things that give me more positive hope that young and old, black, white, male, female, all around people, I believe when that, when that spark is lit, when something kicks their butt and makes them get activated and realize what's going down isn't an accident and it ain't going to get better by accident. But we may have reported in our massive coverage last week Earth's magnetic pole shift unleashing a poisonous space clouds linked to mysterious bird deaths. I know that sounds crazy, but more on naturalnews.com. You may remember hearing the story about how an airport had to rearrange their runways and repaint their numbers. That was in Tampa. The Earth's magnetic pole is shifting. Earth changes are coming. Now, they're going to try and blame it on you as part of the eugenics agenda because you dare to use the filthy, disgusting things they force down our throats, meanwhile shelving all the better, higher-tech, cleaner, more sustainable inventions. They are going to blame the coming Earth changes and the solar events and Solar Cycle 24 and all of the things that are somewhat naturally occurring are going to be exploited. Meanwhile, all the other events caused by our misleaders and multi-generational serial killers, the poison in the water, the poison in the food, the poison on the television, the poison in Congress, those things won't be addressed. Pitting us against each other in defense of the environment would, in the words of the elites themselves, fit the bill. Furthermore, we note that weather control is no myth. Here's just another one to add to the pile. Scientists engineer thunderstorms over Abu Dhabi. We reported the first off the top of my head in this kind of scenario is in the lead up to the Olympics in China. So they were running cloud seeding and what seemed to be rudimentary geoengineering, but this is the weather war. If we couldn't control the weather, then why did nations sign agreements saying they wouldn't use the technology to change the weather? <laughs> and isn't it funny how things are connected? Show me that smile again. Kirk Cameron says the dead birds aren't the end of the world. Kirk, there's a lot of chatter out there on the internet about these thousands of birds and fish dying. Some people saying this is a sign of the end of days. You obviously starred in a series of films um, uh, sort of based on, on the idea of the Left Behind series. When you hear that, what do you think? Well, I, I first think that they ought to call a veterinarian, uh, <laughs> not me. You know, I, I'm not the uh, religious conspiracy theorist go-to guy particularly. But I, I think it's it's really kind of silly to try to uh, equate birds falling out of the sky with some time of an en some kind of an end times theory. But it is interesting the whole the notion of end of times and the whole Left Behind series, which deals with Jesus coming back to take his his people to heaven with believers and non believers. Um, why do you think there's such fascination in that? And, and when something like this happens, people kind of turn to to, to those thoughts. Well, it seems to be that people have a, a, a real fascination with the, the, the mystery of uh, end time predictions. Uh, of course, people uh, get all uh, excited about Nostradamus prophecies, 2012, and of course, biblical prophecy has uh, uh, really been a, a topic of fascination for thousands of years. So I think people are trying to, they love to find codes and, and signs of future events and see if they can decipher them before anybody else. Um, but birds falling from the sky, uh, that, that has more to do, I think, with uh, pagan mythology uh, and, and the way the, and the directions that the birds flew uh, told some of the uh, followers of those legends that uh, the gods were either pleased or displeased with them.